Yo, hold on to your hand tags, ladies and gentlemen. The cap is real. <laughs> Cap is real. Who's capping, bro? <laughs> Yo, you know what? I, I almost said, uh, holy hang tags, Cap, man. <laughs> <laughs> I said it anyway, so. Wait, 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 wait. What did you say? Oh, what did you say? <laughs> Cap, man! <laughs> <laughs> Look, did we, did we just, you know what? I ain't even gonna do it. Episode... <laughs> Bro, the funny thing is, every episode we come out with a new um, superhero. It's, it's always Sneaker fun, bro. It's gonna always be superhero. Sneaker hero, Catman. <laughs> <laughs> cooling, cooling out all your bullshit, Catman. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this is episode seventy four of the Shoe Dog <laughs> Podcast. As y'all can see, it's me, eight hundred eight kicks Q. We got my guy TJ, Love Kids Custom, in the building as usual. We are the Shoe Dog Podcast. Nice. Y'all know I this. Did. You can already tell we're all on one today. <laughs> yeah, might be on two, man. I might be on two. Uh, shout out, shout out uh, to Miss Dot and the Cater family, man. RIP Miss Dot. No shades today. I'm back. I'm all right. I'm back. And you're, you're this like- is, this is the 808 Takeover. This week, last week was the Love Kicks Custom Takeover. This week is the AOA Takeover. TJ don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm actually excited to see what you're going to bring to the table. And uh, we we have to do new takeovers, which is good because basically we don't know. I don't know. We don't. We haven't even organized a program pre 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 kind of podcast because what we normally do, guys, is sit down a day before, go through all the topics and kind of um, not rehearse anything, but just go through the topics we're going to be introduced on the podcast. And cues like last week, cues like you got this. I said, all right, cool. I'll bring it. And then um, this week, I just stepped away. No no conference. No no program. In, no. Like discussion. Just going straight in. I, got, I, so I, 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 I said to you this week let's do it <laughs> no no you know what, what? Um, I, I do want to say uh, shout out to all the audio um, listeners we just we, we, we went over five uh, a couple of weeks ago at this point but once again shout out we appreciate everybody uh, all the YouTube viewers even though y'all don't y'all don't be in the comments I feel like y'all be on our IG's yeah. And we know we know who the bros are, the, the people that actually yeah. reach out to us, man. Listen, if y'all watch the podcast, I know a lot of people that watch probably know us personally also. So it ain't yeah. necessarily about reaching out. But if y'all don't know us, y'all got a, a question or a topic or conversation y'all want to bring to either one of us, make sure y'all hitting us up on the social. And, they, and when and where can they reach us, bro? Come on. Tell, tell us where they can reach us. They can reach you. My guy TJ at Love Kicks Custom. Love Kicks Custom. One word, spelled correctly, L-O-V-E-K-I-C-K, Custom. Okay? Yep, yep, yep. On uh, TikTok and on IG. Y'all get at my guy. And myself, 808 Kicks underscore ATL. Spelled correctly, the numbers 80 and 8 Kicks ATL. If y'all listening <laughs> on IG. Twitter. I'm on uh threads too, the new Instagram, the new meta app. I'm on that okay. too. We're gonna see how that go. I'm gonna stay on that for a little while before I decide whether or not I'm gonna stay on it. Cause it's a little different. It's like Twitter mixed with IG a little bit. Yeah, I I heard Mark Zuckerberg's coming for Elon Musk. That's bro. I I mm-hmm. heard about the fight. I heard yo, you know what the funny thing is? This is not even to do with sneakers, but you know what the funny thing is? Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk want to have to actually have a MMA fight. And when we talk about MMA fight, there's rumors they're gonna have it at the uh, Roman Coliseum as well. Bro. Imagine that, <laughs> bro. Elon, Elon Musk, Elon Musk is the is the smartest idiot in the world, bro. Like the the way he the way he came up and like the craziness. It's it's almost like as if the money makes you crazy. Like this dude got the, the some of the goofiest ideas 
but he got so much backing and so much power. You know what I'm saying? This is ridiculous, bro. He didn't he didn't destroy he, Twitter single handedly. You, you know you, you know what you know what what the really funny thing is. None of these guys actually made anything. They t- took ideas and, and elevated to a, a different spectrum. Tesla, Tesla isn't Elon Musk's idea, bro. It was no, somebody no. else's idea that he bought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. listen, yeah. man. Uh, Mark, Mark, Mark Zuckerberg is we know we know the social social movie. What was that what was that movie media. Mark Zuckerberg? That's the one, bro. We already know. We already know situations. It, it, it ain't the ideas, it's the money that drives it, bro. Let's just be honest. Yeah, that that movie was like the heir of Facebook. Yeah, like yeah. we know it wasn't completely accurate, but a lot of people develop um, opinions on these guys. But it's their actions for me in public that make me like. I don't feel no kind of way about Zuckerberg. I don't rock with him, but I don't hate him either. But Elon Musk, he just keep doing stupid stuff, bro. He's yeah. like the, he's like the Borat of tech. <laughs> Bro, bro, listen to this one. He he took over Twitter, started firing pro employees, and then he goes to people, "Do you like this? Are you still, you still, uh, you want to quit this app yet?" Nope. And then they were like, he was like, "All right, cool, that's fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of make sure you pay for your checks. You want to quit this app yet?" Nope. All right, so I'm gonna make sure you you limit your you limit your tweets to three hundred if you haven't got an account. Do you want to you want to leave this app yet? Nope. And literally, people are still rocking with it. How, how can you? This guy is like testing the waters to see how much, how many u- users can leave twi- Twitter in the wow. short amount of time, bro. Oh, so, so, so the Zuckerberg gang said, you know what? <laughs> He's stupid. Let's do a better version <laughs> or attempt a better version. And so far, <laughs> it, it's only been with like five days or three, four days right now as of this recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, and it's confusing. You know, I had um shout out Scott. I ain't said that in a long time. Scott um DM me and was like, So what did you unfollow me? I'm like, no, nah, bro. It's the, the threads thing. He like, what what the hell is threads? I said, Well, it's the new, it's the Instagram <laughs> version of Twitter, right? I said <laughs> he was like <laughs> He, 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 he's, got, he's like, choose moving funny. He's like, what do you mean, choose moving funny? He, he unfollowed, me, unfollowed me again. I said, bro, he's probably not that, bro. He's, he hasn't unfollowed you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm trying to tell him. I'm trying to tell him, right? I said, bro, it's, 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 it's tied to Instagram. So when you first, yeah. for those that haven't done it yet, when you first get on threads, you log in with your Instagram. So it's full circle for me, right? Because when I created my Instagram, I logged in with my Facebook. And now oh. I'm, I logged into threads with my Instagram. It's all okay. t- it's all meta. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah, why yeah. I said to you in, in a private conversation, it's the same thing, like the, the policies and all that stuff. It's the same as if you got a Facebook, if you got an Instagram, it's all tied right. together. It's all meta. You know what I'm saying? So threads... No, 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 no. Once you log in, once you log in with your IG, it asks you if you want to follow everybody that you follow on IG. And I just hit yeah. Okay, so then it starts to follow everybody. Okay, cool. That that makes sense because now you go got- your Instagram notifications. Also, oh, basically, you, you're following. You're not. You're not actually following people on Instagram. Re- re-following people on Instagram. You're following Insta people on Threads, and that's why it came out of a notification. Even, right, even cool. if you haven't made. Even if you haven't logged into Threads, because it's yeah. tied to your IG, it's gonna give you and the notification. What, and this is what Scott said. This Scott Scott said, "I'm not ex- I have not accepted Threads, but why is it it got my account with me with my name on it?" I said, "I don't know, bro." Nope. It's tied <laughs> he was to like, you. Join it. Nope. <laughs> activated. I can't see. I can't see Scott on Threads because I know, but had an activated him. account. You know what I'm saying? I said, Scott. Scott, you want Fred's? He goes, nope. <laughs> you nope. can use it. <laughs> nope. Hey, bro, I'm just, I'm just trying to, nope. you know, um, I'm, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see what is, is, it's looking pretty cool to be honest with you, um, because I never, I never really liked Twitter. I'm on Twitter for links and sports yeah. news, and if I can get those same links and sports news on Threads, I'm done with Twitter. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's not looking, that's looking ominous from Elon, but, um. 
It's got I, I have reluctancies. I don't use Twitter at all. Um, to be honest, I only use it for like news, uh, sneaking news, and that's it. Um, or just to see what's coming, and that that's pretty much right. it. I don't really use. So uh, in 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 retrospect, I don't really need threads, but it's another just addition to to kind of Instagram. Yeah, it's just, a, just another app, bro. Social media is doing exactly what every every other company does: is copy, emulate, and make it better. We're, we're, we're gonna we're talk about that later. We're gonna talk about that later. Yeah. Let's get to uh, a little bit of sports. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. What you should say? I want to say, I want to say, on, on the sports regards, I want to say a big shout out to the England Under Twenty One team uh, that won their first Under Twenty One championship in thirty nine years, and the way they won it was absolutely dr- dramatic as well. Because what actually happened was they were leading one nil. And the last minute of extra time after 90 minutes, we're talking about like the last kick of the game. They won a pet Spain won a penalty, and the, our goalkeeper, our under 21 goalkeeper, kind of saved it, double saved it to actually win the championship. So shout shout to uh, uh, Trafford, who actually uh, actually was the hero of the day. But yeah, bro, 39 years for England under 21 to win a European championship. Damn, that's that a long time. <laughs> that's what's up, man. That's congratulations. Shout out, shout, out to their, shout out to their squad, bro. The whole squad for for um, breaking that curse, if you will. And let me let me just say one thing on that. When I, I had a conversation with somebody, and if you know football, um, if you know football like uh, like I do, um, we I've been following football for like since nineteen ninety four when I was a teenager, um, and then basically we saw a lot of English players play in the football league. And uh, when, when, you, when we had more foreign people, foreign players come into the league from Europe and from, from South America and all of that stuff, people were saying, oh, these youngsters are, these youngsters are going to kind of uh, dwindle away. Our English football team is not going to be as great as again. Um, and the, you, that, that's the fear factor coming in, basically. There was like, oh, what, what's going to happen to our English football league and all of that stuff because we've got too many foreigners playing. Our English, English um, players won't get chances and blah, blah, blah. And uh, it's very short, it's just very narrow minded and short minded in that perspective because the way I look at it is competition breeds competition. So you're you're enhancing the competition. You're only going to get better with with the, the amount of quality and talent that you get in. So if the European players coming in are actually quality, we're talking about we're talking about migration of of a of coaches and European players that actually evolved the English game massively. I'm talking about from dietary recommendations to techniques to tech to technicians and all of that stuff so from that perspective alone it's only going to make the, the English football team better because the younger players are playing with better players um, and they, they've got more competition to drive through to become the elite players to play for the football club and that's happening as, as that has been happening and we've seen young players come through so whenever whenever we talk about this always say Competition breeds competition. So with the with the amount of talent you have, it's only going to evolve your players you've got, and it's only going to make your national teams better. And a lot of people are scared, always, always scared about. Oh, what about about English players? You got to remember, the English football team at this moment in time, I would say, is in a very good position to move forwards. And that that success with under twenty one teams has just shown what um, over the, the vast amount of years of breeding in talent it, but it doesn't matter what 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 diversity is there from or what what areas of the world they're from it's only going to make the team better oh are you talking about the national team or is this uh no no the, the regular the regular premier league team so what what's what's been happening okay, is okay 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 yeah no no so no, no 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 I, yeah. I i i hear everything you're saying i don't know enough about the situation but what you're saying uh, makes sense from a outside perspective um what it sounds like is Y'all need homegrown talent. Yeah, no, we we got grass. We got, it's called grassroots talent in grass fo- fo- grassroots football. But basically, we have got homegrown yep. talent. And what what's been happening over the years is, um, what's happened in the last five to seven years is players that have actually been in the youth teams that haven't got a chance to play in the Premier League actually go to Germany or, or right. other. That's and, what I mean. The homegrown talent needs to stay home long enough to be able to have a shot at being on the big stage for England. You know, English players yeah. playing for England, homegrown talent is going – the storytelling of it would be a lot better. And from what you're saying with the, with with this youth team winning the championship, hopefully that can trickle up to – Yep, that's, that's, the, the that's definitely going to trickle up. No, and there's, there's two there's two players in in the in the Premier League at the moment that were in the, in the under twenty one team that play for Liverpool Football Club, which is my club, which is Harvey Elliott and um, Curtis Jones, and, and they, they need they need to reach back. 
hey, look at what yeah. we got. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Look at what y'all did. We come from there. Y'all took it further than we did. Come up here with us, and together we can make this English team a champion and, and build a legacy off, off homegrown talent. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And the, the thing is, the, 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 play, the two players I just mentioned are I have, have been having first team football for for Liverpool Football Club, which is good because um, the, the, that that winning mentality. The reason why Germany and Spain and and all the big teams do really well is that winning mentality in the youth stages, so under 18s, under 21s, under 23s, all of it's that stuff. It's got to trickle up, though, bro. It's yeah, like it's, it's like Carmelo, Carmelo won a championship in college, right? At yeah, Syracuse, yeah. As a freshman, as the leader of the team, he did that. He went to the NBA and he played predominantly for two franchises. Denver just won a championship, right? Yep, yep. When Carmelo was in Denver, they got they got pretty close. You know, they get they got in the playoffs and they they were a very good team for a long time. But then him going to the Knicks. The Knicks ain't ain't winning nothing no time soon. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you take a championship caliber player and put them in a bad system, it's not going to work out. So it's got to be both. You know, the, the club, the clubs that these players go to have to have that winning system to plug for them to be able to plug in their talents. As long as it's, it's all cohesive, it's it's a lot of moving parts, but. Shout out to to that team, bro. Like thirty nine yeah. years is a long, long time and not win that. <laughs> it's not. Last time England won the World Cup was nineteen sixty six. Let's just be honest, bro. It's, it's been a long time to, yeah. By the way, yeah. uh, shout out, shout out to the U.S. team. Uh, last weekend we was out um, at Dave and Buster's, and the U.S. team smacked Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> bro, it was like six nothing. <laughs> I know, I know. Bring your voice about Carolina. Smack. Smack, bro. I was watching the I I I got to see like the the full um third the third quarter. Bro, it was ooh, it was bad. <laughs> it is what it is, bro. It is what bro, it is. They scored like they scored like four goals in the last 20, 30 minutes. <laughs> You can tell the fitness the fitness levels of the of the Trinidad, Trinidad Tobago team isn't that great. If obviously if your <laughs> if fitness level is not allowing you to play football for the lot for the whole night, bro, bro. The dribbling the dribbling exhibition that they put on, dog. This this one guy I can't remember his name, man. He crossed up two guys so bad, bro, so bad. He put both of them on the ground, dog, and then faked <laughs> out the goalie. <laughs> It was, it was, I, anyway, listen, okay. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I ain't, I, U.S., the U.S. viewers and listeners, watch soccer, bro. It's, it's, yeah. it's dope, bro. It's dope. If you, if you, if you get a chance, uh, especially if you play the game, play FIFA or something, you know, get the hang of the rules. So it'll, it'll enhance your watching experience, bro. Soccer's a great sport, bro. Is when yeah, you when you get a, when you catch a good match with with great players. I mean, like great strikers and and midfield dudes. <sighs> anyway, yeah, it's it's the biggest it's <laughs> the biggest sport in the world. But if so- soccer, football is the is the biggest sport in the world, hands down. Um, I ain't got too much on the NBA summer league going on. All all the um the NBA summer leagues and tournaments are going on. All of the, the Drew Leagues and the Peace Jams and all that stuff going on. It's plenty of basketball to talk about, bro. I don't want to get into it because it's so much. I'm gonna forget some stuff. The NBA Summer League is way more exciting than people think because them young dudes out there playing for a job. And they putting they putting everything on the line. You can tell who's gonna make it and who won't. I mean, dudes out there in the summer league dropping 30s, bro. 30s and 40s, they dunking on people crazy. It's ridiculous, man. I'm enjoying it. Um, and if you got the NBA app, you get a lot of these games for free. So, okay. Um, summer league games. Go and, get yourself, and, guys. Go get yourself the NBA app then. Yeah, download the NBA app. They'll turn on your notifications. They'll send you notifications for these games, and you can watch them. They on t- a lot of them on TV too. The NBA summer league games on TV. Um. <clears throat> Anything, anything, on, 
Huh? Anything with Zion for this week? Nothing. Nothing. Zion's doing bad this week. No, actually, Zion was at K fifty four. Um, looking, yeah, looking good. Um, Luca was there. Killian Mbappe was at was K fifty four. Oh, uh, bro, you don't even want to know what's happening with uh, Mr. Mbappe over. I don't. I don't. I don't. Not uh-huh. right now, bro. Not uh-huh. right now. Right now bro. Don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, we'll we'll talk. We'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. Um, but I do want to um move into the quick strikes. Staying on sports, moving into the quick strikes. Um, shout out to Mr. Franklin Session, aka Frank Nitty, one of the dopest basketball players out there. Um, somebody need to sign Frank Nitty, bro. To I mean, he he was he was going crazy in the big three. Um, he he deserved to be in the NBA, bro. So much so that Jordan Brand honored him with his own colorway, a collab on the Zion to the Nitty way. These hard, bro. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that looks that looks dope. That looks fire. That looks amazing, bro. I mean, as a street baller, uh, a pro or amateur or whatever, however you want to classify these type of uh, players, great players. Um, for Jordan Brand to give this man a sneaker, bro. He's not an NBA player. He's not a Jordan athlete. Well, I guess yeah. he is now, right? Yeah, he, yeah. He's probably gonna have them if he didn't already have the, the packages coming. He's gonna have packages coming right now. <laughs> that, that's magnificent, bro. That's magnificent. Dude. Everybody, loves, everybody loves to see stuff like this, bro. That's crazy. Yeah, man. So shout out to Frank Nitty. Y'all follow him, bro. His highlights are crazy. Yeesh. He went, oh, he dropped, I think he dropped like 50 in the Drew League. Something like that. Okay. Something, something stupid like that. So yeah, man. Shout out to Frank Nitty. Frank uh Franklin Session. Shout out to him. <laughs> um in other sports news. Do you know who the man that Machado me? is? I heard I heard about him. Um uh, you bro, it's all about the cleats, isn't it? We talked about this last week. It's all about the cleats. Bro, Manny Machado. I didn't know he was a Jordan athlete. First of all, if if you're looking at the uh, the video, you can see he got on a Jordan wristband, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got yeah. on Jordan gloves. He played for uh, San Diego Padres, by the way, baseball team. Bruh, this man got Kobe Jordan seven low cleats. <laughs> I saw that. Too. I saw that this week. That's crazy, bro. Cleats, bro. Like we need to take up some sports. <laughs> it's, it's based on the Hall of Fame Kobe's, um, bro. I mean, it, come on, dog. That is crazy. <laughs> that, that, that that is crazy. <laughs> but wait, there's more from Mr. Machado because <laughs> come to find out, he's the king of cleats. Oh, the, he was the one with the Jackie Robinson fire cleats. Oh, damn, they look fire, bro. I mean, look, look, look. And apparently, he rocking sevens. He got PS7 yeah, yeah. cleats, one of one. <sighs> Manny Machado, different, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's a PJ Tucker. He's a PJ Tucker <laughs> on baseball. Look at them fives, bro. She all custom stupid. Look at I mean the leather on there, the, the gator leather. Look at the tone. Oh guys, if you if you if you're um if you need to go and tune into our uh, YouTube uh, podcast to, for the visuals because the, some of these sneakers are absolutely dope. Uh, yeah, 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 he yeah, got, yeah, yeah. He got yeah, yeah. Tokyo five cleats. Look. <laughs> Did you see it? Yeah, yeah, I saw it. He pulled him aside, bro. Yeah, to show you this ten low that we with his net house of Machado on the come on, bro. <laughs> come on, bro. I'm sick. I'm sick of Machado right now. 
you now, 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 no, no need to be jealous, bro. We just need, we just need to go to the driving range with our golf clubs, start, start swinging, and ask um somebody to give us some golf Jordan fours or Jordan ones. You know, no, 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 Oh, bro, I saw this. This is dope. This is super dope, bro. I saw this the other day. Sheesh. Uh, Michelle Wee, Jordan 1 High, Golf, Wave Air is what they call it. No, this, this, look at her face. (laughs) Oh, these are dope. (laughs) This is like uh, the Oski dunk with the shark. Yeah, yeah, with yeah, this is the wavy dunk. <laughs> Bruh, this is and then the Dubray comes off. It's a actual golf something golf related, a pin something she's Oh saying. yeah, yeah. You, you can you can use you know you know golf it when you do when you play golf, right? And then um basically you want to place your placement with a with actual golf ball with that's what you use. That's that's the kind of okay. uh, metal placement. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's dope if you could do it with the debris. hmm They put her daughter name on it. In in um in her pause, language, pause pause the reaction of her face when she actually opens the box up and sees the sneakers. That expression is every sneakerhead's expression when they first get a pair of sneakers. That expression, bro. <laughs> that that retracted lips. Oh, <laughs> that reaction is every sneaker's reaction when they see a fire pair or sneaker come to your door. That's that's the reaction you get when the Tokyo T25s come out in 2025. No, two, two, T23s come out in 2025. That's the reaction you're going to get from me. Because, yeah, the retracted lips and that breath of air that makes you say, ooh, these are hard. <laughs> Bro, shout out to Michelle <laughs> Wee, man. Like, these... Jordan Brand is turning up on the golf side so hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just we just heard about um did, did you see the report that they made what 19 billion over the past five years or something like that? Oh yeah, 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 bro. I was gonna talk. I was I was hoping you was gonna bring this up. Yeah, next quiz fight, right? I was I was hoping you were gonna bring this up because Remember, remember a couple of weeks back we did a uh, we did a uh, tr- true for facts. We don't know we don't know what, what to believe with that whole TikTok thing when um, people said uh, Jordan Jordan got conned or out of the Hornets and stuff like that. And, um, right. and he and he got the guy goes who'll never be a billionaire again. It's like, what are you talking about, bro? Did this guy earn 145 million over one year? Right, um, like that's how, it ran up to 150 million, and that's just that's just, just the beginning. Uh, I think I think there was is it the accumulation of billions that Jordan Brown have been getting over the last five years and has been more and more and more. So the question is, if they made 19 billion, how much of that goes to Mike? Because he has a salary, right? Uh, everybody, everybody has a salary. The wage employees got wages. Everybody got to get paid. So. <laughs> ain't, ain't nothing else to talk about about, about that. that yo about bro that. whatever whatever dude was on bro he his numbers were off too and that was that was our problem with that whole, that, that whole monologue of his like he he said some stuff that was believable but he also said some stuff that didn't make sense and this report yeah. this report if it's true 19 billion a lot of that is going in Mike's pocket not not nowhere yeah. near like the majority of it or nothing but uh, so, so the the contract with Nike Jordan has always been five percent, five percent of the, for the profits. Well, that's them. Nike, that's Nike. Not- but the Jordan brand deal is different because it's him. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be different. I know. I, I think it's. I think he may, maybe possibly. Let's just say, look, cool. Let, let, we don't want. To, we don't know what the deal is at this moment in time. It's not. If, he, if we look it up, it's gonna take. I'm, take, take I'm, time. I'm willing to say. I'm willing to say without the facts. Let's let's let me just do this right quick. Yeah. So we so we can get off this after after whatever you had to say about what I say. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. His his ownership of the Jordan brand has to be a majority stake. Or yeah. it don't make sense, knowing who he is and what he did. You know what I'm saying? That's the movie we need. Air two, when the eleven's getting ready to come out and and the behind the scenes of no, nah, we gonna take the Nike off the box. 
when did jo- when Jordan took over? That that's what the, the, it should when, be. Aired to when Jordan, it, when Jordan Brand began, we need the Jordan Brand yeah. movie. No, 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 not the Jordan Brand began when Jordan Brand took over. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. When 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 Jordan Brand became a subsidiary of Nike versus the the Jordan shoe being a Nike product, now it's a Jordan Brand product. All right, so, so I'm I'm gonna say let's just let's just fire bullets into the air, right? Because at this moment in time, we don't know what the do- deal with Jordan Brand is. For, we don't know the majority stakeholder of Jordan Brand with Michael Jordan. So from that perspective alone, if we go back to the narrative that he earns five percent of Nike sales, and this is say, let's just say, right, it's five percent of Jordan. So let's just say, and we know it's not, but let's just say, using the bare facts we know of for Michael Jordan's Nike contract, five percent. That's fine. Um, that's 975 million. If it is 5%, bro. If it, it could be way more, right? <laughs> so that, that, no, it's not, it's over five years, he's earned 900, 975 million, right? And you're laughing here, bro, because you know, you, you know it's crazy. And like, that's, you know, you know the fact is, he, like, from, from the, if facts and figures are correct, and if that factually said, um, Michael Jordan earned 94 million, right? 94 million out of his NBA career, right? Just for ages alone. That's that's. <laughs> that's just that's for basketball, bro. He he made way more than that off the co- Gatorade. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not talking about sponsorship. I'm not talking about merchandise. No, I'm no, no, about- no, no. You you are you are because he made more than his NBA contract then. Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. Like, come come on, bro. Come on, we ain't got to have no more serious conversation about Michael Jordan bank account. Yeah, unless we're making jokes, okay? No more serious, nothing, bro. I, it's it's too much math, dog. He probably every, got seventeen accounts. Everything, everything after that is just you are fake news. Exactly, bro. Because oh, let's just, let's just say let's just say Michael Michael Jordan is not batting an eyelid if it comes to finances at this moment in time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> round of applause, round of applause he deserved that. Round of applause for Michael Jordan on, on his successful... he, doesn't, he doesn't have to think about money if he don't want to. <laughs> no, no. I think about money all the time. He probably saw that TikTok and said Say and went back to sleep. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, I, one thing I was going to say about the ho- that whole situation was there's a lot of facts and figures that aren't correct. So it's it's important to kind of this is why uh, TikTok is social media is a good and bad thing because obviously some some people are like drawn into that narrative of kind of you know oh yeah Michael Jordan this Michael Jordan that blah 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 oh yeah he's he, he, he. nah it, it's it's trash it's trash bro but the great part about social media is when Kyrie Irving started talking. <laughs> Cause y'all, bro, y'all, y'all think it's a game, bro. Kyrie ain't playing with y'all. He letting you know for the past seven years, the Kyrie Irving line has grossed two point six billion dollars in revenue for Nike. Yeah, who doing what? Yeah, yeah, who doing what, bro? You, you know what I'm going to say was, I thought that initial tweet was disrespectful. It says, besides, it got, the original tweet, tweet that came out for that was, um, besides Mike, Kobe, and Bron, who has the highest selling signature shoe? The fact that he didn't mention Kyrie's in there, right? Yo, Kyrie, Ky, Kyrie clapped back real hard, real, real hard. And he said, you, you said what? You said what? Bro. What are you talking about? And Kobe, Kobe, you can't even talk Kobe right now because we didn't have what five Kobe since he died. Oh, bro, don't worry about that. Kobe season is starting on after twenty fourth of August, Fact. bro. Don't Fact. worry about that. Kobe, Kobe, Kobe day worry. is coming. Mamba day is coming. However, and you know, and you know what Nike said about that there last week, like we're relaunching the Kobe brand. Yeah. It was just about about about, about, about a eyelid, like blink your eyelid is here. That's what they, happened. They they had to work it out with Vanessa. We we heard all the controversy, um, and then it got quiet. I'm glad it got quiet because I, I didn't really want to talk about it that much. I just I was just hoping that it worked out because 
Adidas started dropping Kobe Pro Tros or Retros. Pro Tros. Yep. Uh, hopefully Pro Tros. <laughs> um, but um, I've, I've seen the reverse Grinch. Another one. I've seen the triple black. Another one. I've seen the cool purple. Another one. Bro, everything's coming out. Another one. Pro Tros are coming Another out. Another one. Bro, don't worry about that, bro. So with, with, that, with all that being said, since Kobe died, and before, actually, Kyrie Irving has been killing the basketball space for Nike. So, and you, and you know what I said about that? Kobe, Kobe's, Kobe sneakers, sneakers inspire Kyrie sneakers. The, exactly. This is why they did a, they did. This is why they did a Bruce Lee crossover sneaker for that. The Bruce, right. the original Bruce Lee crossover sneaker was a Kyrie Kobe sneaker, bro. Hold that thought. We're gonna come back to that. Okay. Next quick strike. Yo. Oh, yes, I saw this and it made me happy because you we talked about this in the podcast a while back. A while, while back. And I was like, you know, Q's going to bring this up. Q's definitely going to bring this up because, go on, bro, say it. Say it. Prime is back with Nike. <laughs> Dion Prime, Prime Sanders. I'm talking about <laughs> the greatest athlete to ever walk the face of the planet is back. Yes, I said it. Bring up who you want to bring up and we can talk about it. We can have a conversation. Deion Sanders, I'm going to say it again, is the greatest living athlete ever on the planet Earth in the history. And he's back with Nike. And you that means, and you know what that means. You already know what that means. That means we getting diamond turfs. Oh, they say he got a new logo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. New I logo. Said, no, no more. Um, no more diamond turf logo with the twenty one, twenty four. Um, yeah, there's a. There will be a new logo. We ain't seen him yet, but we do see the uh, here. I wonder if this is his personal pair. Yeah. Because they aged out. They super aged out. Uh, with a, he got a pair of the OG diamond turfs. You can tell they old, they yellow. You can see the uh, the white around the suede panels. You Yo, know what? This, the funny thing was? this is the greatest. This is the greatest trainer, bro. Right, listen, man. SC's trainer one, uh, trainer three. I don't care what nobody say, bro. This is the greatest Nike trainer sneaker of all time, in my opinion. And you know what was really funny dude, was when you um, when we talked about this and you said that he, Nike wasn't going to renew his contract and blah 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 and then he's walking away from Nike. Um, you went down hot, this whole memory lane of Diamond Turf, Dion Sanders sneakers, and um, I, I felt sorry for you because I thought you sh- we don't release them anymore. But when I saw this news, that's one bit of news that made me really happy this week, and I was like, "Yeah, Q's going to bring this up. Definitely, Q's going to bring this up." No, I can't wait. I, I just I just copped a pair of the um the 2018 96 diamond turfs. Mm-hmm. Um the white and red colorway. I love that sneaker. I got it. I'm still gonna put a little bit of work into it, um, a little bit of repaint. But no, nah, bro. This is this is this it for me right here. Yeah, yeah. This is it for me right here. As long as they ooh, I can't wait, bro. I can't I don't care what they do. <laughs> I need I need this OG colorway. Um I would like to have one of the older pairs, but because of the fact that this is officially stamped by the, because they kept, you know, they did bring the diamond turns back, uh, 2018, 2017, a bunch of pairs, you know, in the mid late two thousands, the teens anyway. Um, yeah. so to, to have Dion stamp with a new logo, coach prime, um, Colorado was a Nike school. So we knew he was going to be forced to wear Nike. And somebody was somebody at Nike was smart enough to be like, you know what, we got to make this right. It's only right. Yeah, Think yeah, about yeah. it, bro. Colorado's colors are black and gold. The the OG Diamond Turf is black, white, red, and gold. Yeah. The second colorway was what black and gold with purple. You know what they go? It's gonna be a Colorado colorway. It's gonna be a black and gold, black, white and gold, white and gold, 
all black, all gold with black, or all gold with what? It's it's about to go crazy, bro. Ninety six is coming <laughs> back. Um, I'm ready, man. I'm ready. I need the aquas. Oh, God. it's about to be trainers. Stu- Somebody <laughs> give Mr. Miller on the line. <laughs> <laughs> Cause we gonna we gonna we gonna talk about this. We gonna have this trainer conversation, bro. Cause I got Bowles second. I got I got the the uh, trainer high SC second to the Diamond Turf, the OG Diamond Turf. Yeah, trainer ones third or fourth, depending on what I'm going on. I, I would say third, just off the top. I would have the trainer one third. To the bow and the Dion. Okay. So we going I don't want to hear it, bro. We can have that trainer. <laughs> and, it, and Dion ain't even got no air bubble. You know how I feel about my air bubble. Yeah, you don't you don't like the air trainer one because it hasn't got an air bubble. No, I don't dislike the air trainer one. Yeah, you don't but want you don't rock it because it hasn't got the air bubble. That's the one. I, I feel like it's missing. Yeah, yeah. I can understand that. Definitely understand that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's, that's shout a out, trade. Bro. Shout out to Dion, bro. Look at that. Sheesh. <laughs> oh, Dion was the man, greatest athlete of all time. We can have that conversation too. Y'all get at me. It away kicks. I'm with it. <laughs> so, I I made myself happy. Now I got to make you yeah. happy. What's that? You ready Ooh. for the for the uh, official looks of the oh, Jordan Four Olive? Yeah, bro, bring it, bro. That that is fire to me, bro. It's a craft Olive Fours coming out. What time? November? Uh, or December? Something like one, that. One. Yeah, something Fall like that. I can't, I can't wait for that, bro. That is dope. Super dope. I still don't understand the light green on the bottom. Yeah. But the uppers on this, it's stupid, bro. It looks like the camo freeze. It does definitely look like the camo freeze. Only thing that's missing is the Whitland pattern, but it don't yeah. need it. This, this is. It. <sighs> you know what? I'm going to say a, this about the, that the Olive Four. It's not going to be. It's not going to be hype. I don't. So, it's not going to be hype. Five. I know, I know, I know. It's a vibe. It's not going to be hyped. It's going to be everybody to look at that and look at the look at the uh, meshing uh, missing. Everybody's going to look at that and remember the craft falls that came out recently. They're not going to want that. I don't care what they want. But bro, it means they're going to be more more readily available. I'm looking forward to that olive four. Oh, no. I already, fire. You already got it. fire, bro. Fire. You already, bro. You already got it. <laughs> I got it before I got it. Yeah. <laughs> bro, look at the back tail. I know. I is know, it bro. Brown? Is it is it cream. Uh, it cream with the sail Jordan cream? It's tra- or translucent black uh tab at the back. It looked brown though. No, it's translucent black. But the, against that green, it yeah, it looks brown. brown. And ain't never yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that, that's that's you know that, that's one sneaker I'm gonna pull retract my face and retract my lips and go ooh when it when it when I see it bro. <laughs> well, actually, it's two sneakers. You you know you already know you already know about this Palomino, bro. Um, and you know what? And you know one thing I was gonna say was when I see that when I see the stock pictures, it looks boxy to me. It looks very, the toe looks boxy. It looks a bit different. It looks a bit odd to me. But when I see it on feet, that looks dope. And that that's one sneaker. Yo, bro, it looks, it looks like the inverse of the, um, inverse of uh, the but, elephant Jordan Freeze. There's an elephant. There's an elephant Jordan Freeze. But also, you know, if it's like if you w- mixed the with Archie or Brown Winterize Free and then mix and smashed it against the Desert Elephant Free, it looks like that's what, that's what they will get. Uh, it's different enough. Yeah, different yep. enough. I get, I get what you're saying. Um, that is, that's a, that's a good one. Mixing those two together, but I'm leaning more towards um, muslin with this. It's yeah, like yeah, a yeah, mute, yeah, Like a mute, a more mute muslin. The muslin was already super mute, but and, a, 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 a muslin, a muslin, and um, the Jordan Free Mocha as well. 
You know what I don't get though? The gray. What's that? The gray outsole. Yeah, with the eyelets, the gray eyelets and the gray outsole. I don't get that part. I I, I can I can see you past that because it's a gold jump man. Yeah, they should have gold. They should, that gray should have been gold, shouldn't it? Really? No, I think the gold and the gray should have been brown. But that's just me. But you know that 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 desert elephant brown woodland. It looks like a woodland sneaker, bro. It looks like a. It looks like yeah, bro. That that's no, look, fire. No, look, woodland to me with that that sail suede. <laughs> you're gonna destroy that shoe, going. <laughs> Yo, bro, I I might need to switch out the laces though. I don't like those. Don't, don't like those laces. If I'm honest, I might need to put some brown laces in. They might come with brown laces. We'll see. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, the Palomino Jordan Three. Um, I'm looking forward to both the Palomino Jordan One and Jordan Three. Like that, but the, yo, let's not even talk about the Jordan One Palomino, bro. That's dope. I'm already seeing shade about the ones. People um talking about they're not gonna compare to the mochas. One. Yeah, no, I don't care. I, I, I don't care. Um, it, your bro, it is a, it's a, it's a mocha, it's a mocha one rendition. It, whatever you want to say to it, but um, that sneaker is fire, bro. And you know, unfortunately, um, like, like we're gonna see with the UNC toe, UNC one toe. Th- there's gonna be a lot of pairs circulating, so it's gonna be easier cop. But it doesn't matter, um, because pff, the Palomino Jordan one is beautiful. It's just beauty and perfection. Hey man, people people gonna have their opinions. Dope is dope, bro. Uh, yeah, we can, we can you can do the comparisons if you want to. I ain't I ain't into comparing no more. No, if it's hard, no, no, no. It's hard, bro. Let, let, let me let me, can, let me put it. Listen, no, no, no. We we get the conversation can be had. The conversation is cool just for the sake of you know sneaker conversation, which is always great. But um, the mochas. Versus the Palomino. So what's next? The Travis, you're gonna put the Travis high and low in there too, right? No, yeah. it's a worthless no. conversation, bro. Dope is dope. No, exactly. Do- dopeness, dopeness is dopeness. And let's just say that, right? With with the Mocha ones and the Palomino ones, why argue? Because you got if people got both, people got both. Who who do, who cares? Who cares? Because you got both. You love you love both. You like both. Have both. Does a matter? Or, like, or like, not? I, I don't, how 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 can you how can you go and exclude like and say say you know um I don't I don't think Palomino is dope because it, it's just another rip off of a, of a mocha or I don't like the Palomino because it's it's another version of mocha oh don't compare the Palomino to the mocha blah blah oh this hard this hard who cares you like it you like it you wear it you wear it you can have the discussion if you want to but when when you see dopeness it's always going to be dopeness and you know what. It's just good. It's just oh, beautiful. It just, yeah. just put it on. Put it on your feet. Just enjoy it. What's the all the argument and discussions about? Whoa, come on. Just just smell it, wear it, enjoy it. <laughs> See what I'm make saying? Sure you, make sure you smell it first. Make I mean, sure yeah. smell it first. Don't smell it after, it might smell a bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh next quick strike. Um <laughs> Let's celebrate, man. We will celebrate social status. The Whitaker, uh, the, the Whitaker group yep. has done it again. Another spectacular ad campaign, this time for the social status Nike Mac attack. This Ooh, is the yeah, silver yeah. lining colorway. This is the first we saw. Um, I don't know the name of the other colorway. The colorway with with the red, the green, and the yellow. We saw that one first. We did not see the silver lining colorway. The box is ridiculous, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. But tell, tell them the good thing about this sneaker as well. The price? No. What? What you talking about? You can you can remove the swoosh. Um, it rips away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's what they rolling with the rip, the rip away. You it looked like you got to do some cutting because it's actual material, which is even better. It's not just yeah. wipe away. No and no shade, no shade to like uh, the LA. Shout out Cam, he just posted the Chicago um, the LA Jordan ones. No shade to sneakers like that. None of the SB Jordans, the um, or dunks they wipe away, but it's more similar to the Jordan Five 
Chinese uh, Jordan Five Low Chinese New Year. Yeah, yeah, where you can remove you material. Have to cut it. Yeah, you have to actually cut the material. Or there was, there was know, a Jordan Twelve. There, there was Jordan Twelve like that. There was a Jordan Twelve Chinese New Year's, or where you could you can right. kind of cut away the your material. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's 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 one of those. Uh, we can see, see it here on the pictures. It's pink underneath. If I went for this colorway, I would leave it gray. I would want it to stay gray because I'm yeah. not into rocking pink like that. But shout out to the Whitaker group. Social status. If you don't follow social status, and I'm the money yeah, and prosper. Um, the dopest ad campaigns in the sneaker space, bro. Yeah. They won awards. It's proven. <laughs> I can't wait to see what they do with the five. By the way, this Mac attack has three more colorways coming from social status. Oh, we I know that, bro. I like li- li- I was mentioning this to um Cam over the live over the weekend. Um the strategy is always a strategy. Um they'll introduce a new silhouette and then off off the back of that, you'll have a collaboration, you'll have hype and give it to Travis because Travis is running with it. Mm-hmm. It looks like you might be getting a Travis Mac attack, and then they give it to mm-hmm. boutiques. Boutiques will have it. So we see we see the Whitaker group and then social status do a, a Mac attack. We're gonna see the same thing. Like, like if the strategies with Nike are identical for most of the campaign, most of the campaigns are identical. Like we saw it with the Air Max, we saw it with the Air Max one. The Air Max Travis Scott was supposed to be their first Air Max one before the Patters, then they gave it to Patter. Um, but, but obviously we know what happened with the Travis situation. Um, then they did the same thing with the tra- Air Trainer. Air Trainer 1 got the OG treatment, then they got a Travis Scott treatment, then they got um, all these other collaborations as well on top of it. Then we got some more colorways. It's the same thing. We got we got it with the Dunks, we got it with the Jordan 1s. We got, it's the same thing rehearsed over and over again. And we, uh, we as consumers love it and we consume it. And that's the, that's the, and if we do, if, if they do, if they keep doing that, we're going to still consume it and love it and enjoy it. The cap is real. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Real, bro. Yeah. It's, it's so good though. It's I mean what <laughs> what the Whitaker group does, even if because I'm not rolling with this colorway and the, the first colorway that we saw, I'm not rolling with. Yeah. Okay. We saw the white and red. I'm not rolling with. I'm not rolling with the OG colorway. I may just be good on Mac attacks in general, to be honest with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, unless, um, okay, cool. How would you feel if Travis Scott came up with a Mac attack um, and it was more oriented to the brown features, darker features, um, reverse swoosh on it, like uh, maybe like what we've seen with the OG, but not an OG, but more of a suede out, suede material for the uppers um, and it kind of brings something unique and different to it. Would you mess with it then? My inner hype beats would not allow me to pass on the Travis Mike. <laughs> I'm just going to stay for real. <laughs> stay for real. Man. My inner hype beats that I fight on a regular basis. That we all, I think we all have some level of hype beats in us. And you know how we, y'all know how we do on this podcast. We attack the hype beats. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I constantly attack my inner hype beast because there's a lot of stuff that's super hype and super valuable that people go for just because it's super hype and super valuable. I would probably go for a Travis Mac attack just because of the hype. Or, yeah, yeah. or if it wasn't hype, like the trainer one, and I end up having a pair, I would force myself to wear it down. Just because yeah. it's not hype. A, book, a book coming to you, Do- Dr. Q and Professor Hype. <laughs> you know what, man? I'm, I'm done with you. <laughs> I'm done with you, man. Made you laugh, my bro. <laughs> I'm done with you, bro. That's it, man. That's it. Uh, moving on. Next quick strike. <laughs> I'm still laughing. I know. Yo. <laughs> I know. I saw. I saw this. You gonna keep laughing too? 
that, that, that was that was part of my sneak and use as well. Um, yo, bring out the grave digger. Bring out the grave digger. This is NBA, NBA Young Boys new um sneaker. Yo, bring out the grave digger. Yo, 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 yo. That is a, is is a rip off of two sneakers. Um, number one, the Air Force One, and number two is a uh, Sukoni. Okay. Okay. Now I was I was gonna shoot him a little bell on the uppers, a little just a, a little bell, because it's a lot going on on the uppers. Yeah, I see Vans, I see Air Force Ones, I see Dunk a little bit, but I did not see Saucony, and now I do. Because yeah, you you, I'm gonna, let me. I'm gonna share my screen. Look at the side panel of that um, of that grave digger that NBA young boys got, mm-hmm. and look at this, bro. Look, look at this, bro. The side panel to the Sukoni basically is the side panel to that grave digger, bro. Tell yeah. me if I'm wrong. It's really close. It's Tell really, me. really, really close. So, um, yeah, man, this is this is. Uh, you know what? And I'm I'm gonna say shout out to him because he was smart enough. Him and or his team was smart yeah. enough to say we have to do enough to not involve ourselves in this controversy that's going on with all these independent shoe makers. So, so what what would you think the thought process was? Let's nick every, a little bit of everything from everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 so Connie, um, Vans, Air Force Ones, Nikes, bro. This what? is a 2K shoe. <laughs> this this is a 2K creator shoe. Yeah, I I I I can see that. Yeah, that's what this. That's exactly what this is a 2K creator shoe. I can I <laughs> bet you I can go on NBA 2K and almost make the same shoe. You reckon? Yeah. <sighs> I'm, I see all the over. I'm looking at the overlays and underlays as individual pieces. Do that. Try that. Try looking at this sneaker in individual pieces. Every every part of this shoe that's stitched together, unstitched as individual pieces. And I've seen them all on 2K before. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. Be, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. If they made this sneaker on 2K, screenshot it, and sent it to some factory and said, make me this. Yeah, you know what? You know what? NBA Young Boy basically went, uh, Air Force One, I'll take that. <coughs> you could Chaconi, I'll take that. <coughs> Vans, I'll take that. <coughs> oh, Air Trainers, I like the eyelets, I might take that. <coughs> brown out, oh yeah, I'm going to take that. <coughs> Yo, Travis, I like your brown, I'll take that. <coughs> You know what I'm saying? Everything, bro. Everything, bro. <laughs> yo, yo. We got suede, leather, and patent leather on this thing, bro. <laughs> yeah, all the material blockings, I'll take that too. <laughs> <laughs> Brown laces. <laughs> yo, oh, yo, this is very this is very Travis Scott inspired with brown earthy tones he's using on that as well. No yeah. cap, yeah. No, and you know, bro, they never broke again. That that whole box, if that's the box of the sneaker, looks like goosebumps. Travis Scott's vi- tra- <laughs> video, bro. You know what? You know what? <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got to talk about this ever again, bro. Yo, 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 yo. We, you know what? The next, the next time we gonna talk about this, this sneaker is when we get a lawsuit. <laughs> Bro, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say one one thing about that, bro. Literally, there's a good reason why they call it the Grave Digger. I'm telling you, there's a good reason why they call it the Grave Digger. Ironically, it's drinking through all those all those archive graves to take all your silhouettes and material blockings and designs to put on that sneaker, bro. Trust me, he's been eating that sneaker constantly to get that muller, bro. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> he should have gotten the Walking Dead. <laughs> Oh maybe, man, maybe. Bro. I I'm glad you would have. I I would have taken that to cool myself, bro. Nah, I, I I hear you. I hear you. 
but no, nah, I got, I got, I got some grave sticker, bro. You know, yeah. uh, you, um, um, I love. I sometimes, you know what, I love doing my sneaker news sometimes, right? Because when I sit there and I look at stuff like that, and I and I start writing what I think in my head, because you you guys don't know, the sneaker news is basically what's written, what I think um, in my head constantly like yo that that situation that situation so when when he did that i was like yo let me make this sneaker news and I, my, my sneaker news started with l- 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 looks like nba young boy is releasing his own sneaker called a grave digger right let's hope he's got enough grave digging money to fight that lawsuit bro, <laughs> bro he won 250 for the shoe <laughs> Well, he's giving you 250 to take it. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, look. I wish, I wish y'all had DTLR over there. Because DTLR is the hub for NBA Young Boy merch. He got a brand. And the, the young people, I mean, listen, bro. I don't listen to NBA Young Boy. However, he has a huge following. Huge. He's not uh, one of these artists that's on the radio and on TV and stuff like that. He is a cult underground superstar. Yeah, I know. Wasn't he dating uh, Mayweather's daughter? One of these things. I don't I don't keep up with none of his stuff. I'm going to be honest with you. I hear about it when I hear about it. I see it when I see it. I don't keep up with it actively, though. But yeah. I'm saying all that to say, his fans are going to eat this sneaker alive. And if you go to DTLR, yep. there is a section. Sometimes it's spread out. Sometimes it's just one big section of Never Broke Again merch. Pants, socks, hats, drawers, sh- shirts, hoodies, oh, everything. On, on that, on that, on that. Um, that's a round of applause. When yeah. people... People, when people can do that, that you got to recognize that aspect of it, hundred percent. Keep killing, bro. And, and, and we, 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 we cracking jokes because we think Nike might try to come after him if, for that outsole. No, 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 no. Don't we do? It's a, it's a triple. It's a triple. It's a lawsuit, bro. If Nike get involved, so Conley needs to get involved, and Vans need to get involved. So. <laughs> It, he needs that money. He never, never broke again. I mean, like you might need to change the name after that. It's still broke or something like that. You know what I'm saying? No, watch out, man. Watch out. <laughs> you, don't, hey, hey, you don't, you don't live in the US, okay? I ain't saying, <laughs> I ain't saying nothing bad about NBA. Young. You what? You, you what? Little Nardi. Little NBA, NBA Young Boy is a great artist, and his brain is doing well. That's all I got. Yeah, that's good. That that's that's good. But little Nas did it. It's very Bape esque as well, which is which is I I kind of when I saw that I look I thought it's Bape esque. I was like it's good. It's good that he you know you're doing is what Dyer-esque, you're doing. Is is little Nar esque? Is is Warren Lotus esque? Is all these all them guys esque? <laughs> well, well, bro. Ironically, the the sneaker name is Grave Digger. He's basically doing what, what everything he's doing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we we, we for to move on. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of grave digger, <laughs> your boy digging graves over there at Adidas, man. <laughs> but uh, the big black boot is putting oh, yeah. everybody to sleep. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> the big black boot mischief again. Yo, they're, they're, they're just doubling down. Uh, we, I, we had this conversation last week about how um, Mischief are doing the most this year because we've seen the Croc collaboration with the Yellow Boot. We've seen the Big, big Red Boot come out. We've seen the Big Black Boot come out. They're just doubling down. And the collaboration of collaboration, um, it just feels like they kind of just basically said, all right, cool, um, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're gonna, we have a schedule. We're not doing it every six months anymore. We're doing it every a couple of months now. Is this legit, bro? If you would like it, I mean, I've I've only seen this one post get reposted. Yeah, I've seen I've seen a couple of pictures of the big 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 back boot. Okay, because I was questioning it for a second because it was kind of quiet. I'm I'm feeling like maybe people 
kind of chilled out on it with the big yellow boot. Maybe this is too soon. I, I think um, these, these, some official pictures are coming up for it as well, uh, which means I think they might be they might be releasing they might be releasing the big black boot. But like I said, with the big red big red boot, it's not for us. It's for it's no, for the no, 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 no. We ain't we ain't even gotta we ain't gotta go through that. We know it's not for us. This is for who it's for. I'll just say that. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to try to um, put it on. We know it's for content creators, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, we seen so it, many on the big red boot as well recently. Yeah, yeah. And uh, listen, man, resellers took huge L's trying to play with mischief products. I don't, I don't know. I think it might be too soon, man. You reckon? I think it might be too soon or too much. When I saw this, and I'm like, we just talked about the big yellow boot, and it's a Crocs collab. Drop that, and then they're, they're, do something else maybe before you go they back. Might, they, the might be, they might be just showing you. Might be showing you stuff like they might be showing you what potentially will will come out, and we might not see the release. In, we might see the big yellow boot come out first, and then a couple of months after, we might get the big big black boot. I um, mean, it's been successful. The Gobstomp had the same thing where the, where the couple of Gobstompers in the same uh, couple of months and then all of a sudden it just went dead, like quiet. We, we also saw uh, Big Red Boot Customs, though. Yeah. So I'm I'm thinking maybe this is a custom. It could be, but like I've seen more pictures of Big Bad Black Boot since since I actually saw it last, which I've seen the other pictures of it. But um, you might be right; they might be a custom. It might it might be a all black custom. Somebody's dyed it, but it looks like it looks like his first pictures of of a potential another uh kind of variation of the big boot. Oh no, man! Oh, I'm not rolling this time. Normally we well, normally um we've been rolling with mischief. I'm not rolling this time. I think it's too soon. Do you, do you think it's too much mischief for all at once? I think it's too soon coming off the big yellow boot. That's about it. it, it seeing the yellow boot a few weeks ago and now having the black one to look at, I think it's too soon. I think the, the timing of the yellow one versus the red was good. I think it should have been yeah. the same amount of time in between this yellow and black versus just a couple of weeks, you know what I'm saying? If this is legit, I'm, and I'm still a little skeptical on whether it's legit or not, time will tell. We'll find out. We'll find out. Time will tell. We'll find out in the next couple of weeks um, to see if that's for. I think it is. Um, I don't think the. I think there's going to be another option after the big yellow boot, but I don't think it's going to come out at, at the same time. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I definitely don't think it's going to come out at the same time. I would. I would never um, think. That'd that. be a mistake. That would be a mistake. Big mistake. Big mistake. Because we know this is a, this a novelty thing at this point. I mean, Mr. Viz is not. They are the novelty brand of the sneaker space. Um, you got, you got to look at it from from mischief point angle. Is the big red boot somebody did a marathon in that recently? Some a lot of people doing customs on it. It's a lot of people wearing it. A lot of celebrities are wearing it. There's a lot of hype behind it. It's capitalizing on that hype. And maybe maybe it is it is a good way to that they're doing it because obviously like in six months time or a years time there might not be that hype for the big boot. So you know, you never know. So consistently, kind of, and it's good that they did the big yellow boot because obviously with the collaboration with Crocs means it kind of gives them more of a notoriety in terms of of terms of like the, the notoriety and the no, novelty sneakers and boots and slippers and all of that stuff, which which yeah. Crocs really well. Um, so that was a good move for them. But capitalizing on it with a big black boot, maybe um, that is a thing. And if it is a thing, it's just basically using that same momentum to actually jump, keep keep producing product. Like we know with trends and hype, this trend and hype for the big boot is not going to last. And if it doesn't last, it might not be here for the next after six to eight months. So uh, I think what Mischief had done is capitalizing on it while it's around and seeing what the repercussions are afterwards. Maybe, maybe that's what their thought is. That makes sense too. That makes sense too. Yeah. I don't know, man. I... Shout out, shout out to Mischief. Um hopefully it work out, man. <laughs> it's I just, always, bro. If, if this is if this big black boot is real, I just think it's too so. But um, I mentioned he's our favorite band outside Nike at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I roll with that. I, I spoke, I spoke uh, quickly before the big uh, back black boot conversation. Your boy digging the digging the grave for itself over there at Adidas, man. <clears throat> Do you want 
uh, new Sean Weatherspoon or Ketra. Okay, okay, yeah, bro. I mean, all white canvas. Uh, well, organic materials. We know how Sean Weatherspoon rock. Yep, all white gum bottom. This is super boring, man. By the I way, like we look. We're looking like at it. pictures. We're looking at pictures from in clothing. This is a bad picture of the of the sneaker. The, the tongue is sunk down and the lace is too tight. There are better pictures of this sneaker that makes it look Yeah, some of your retailer brats need to actually learn to how to take pictures. Yeah, so, bro. Like what? Come on, man. Y'all just take it out of the box and slap it down there. Yeah, make make the shoe look inviting. Like make, make the shoe look interesting and inviting. You know what? Even, even the picture itself is too washed out white. That's why it looks too washed out white. Yeah, bro. Like, come on, in. Y'all gotta. And I ride with in clothing too, um, but y'all y'all got to do a little a little better with these photo shoots for these sneakers. I, I man, do like the okay, okay, Sean Weatherspoon did. I did I did like it. The colorway on that was kind of dope. You got the offspring of Ketro, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it is it? Come on, man! I need you to talk about this. Because <laughs> because <'cause, laughs> no, Sean Weatherspoon has done nowhere near what he's done with several silhouettes and colorways at Adidas versus what he did with one silhouette at Nike. I I I, I can I can I agree with that fully, 100% fully. Uh, there's still potential there. There's there's still, there's still it's really hit and miss with Sean Weatherspoon with Adidas at the moment. It's very hit How and much miss. Okay, okay. Okay. You draft a guy, number one, your high, your highest pick, you draft a guy. At the time, Sean Witherspoon was maybe number two or three pick coming off Nike, right? Nike is college. Let's just do it like that. Nike is university. He won a championship with the 97 one. Mm-hmm. You go to the next phase of your career, which is Adidas. Adidas ain't the Golden State Warriors. Adidas ain't the Los Angeles Lakers or the Boston Celtics. Or the, the Adidas is Minnesota Timberwolves. They ain't won nothing, and they don't look like they on the path to win nothing. But they got you, the number one pick, and they counting on you to bring some relevance, to bring some winning, to bring a different culture to this franchise. And we have you for the first year. We have you for the second year and the third and the fourth year. And now your contract is up. We're going to keep you or we're going to let you ride. Or we're going to give you something based on your performance over the past few years. Mm-hmm. He ain't performed too well. He not getting no Supermax rookie extension. He getting a yeah. mid-level. All right, we'll renew you, but you ain't going to get, we not going to give you the bag, bro. You not, you not, you didn't perform well enough to get the big bag. You know what it, I'm saying? It's really- I, th- I think it's really hard to um, replicate and uh, replicate your own your first success, especially when you don't have the same silhouette. So if 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 he stayed with Nike, maybe he would have done an a ninety seven or a one or a Max one, which is just Sean Weatherspoon. He might have brought like can you can you imagine like the the Oketro Sean Weatherspoon un- unapologetic two thousand the colorway on that on a Max one that would be dope. That 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 would be phenomenal, right? Um, and if you if you the same thing with Adidas Super Turf, or the same thing with the the gazelles he's bringing out, or the same thing with the A6 Gelite Freeze that he did, like those colorways on on iconic sneakers like Air Max One, Air Max Ninety, Jordan Ones, like or even uh, the Ninety Seven, the Ninety Eight, all, all of that would have been a- epic. I'm talking epic, right? Unfortunately, it's it's the silhouettes he's working with, which 
I don't, I, I they're, they're dope silhouettes in general, but I like for me, I'm looking at all these sneakers at this moment in time, and I would say, yeah, the Air Max, Air Max 197 is probably the best one he's done so far. And it's closely up behind that is probably the Oketro because I think the Oketro does really well in terms of what it produces. Other, other things like the Super Tough, um, and uh, the A6 Gel, the A6 Gelite is probably my third favorite, but other thing, other things, um, it's they're not hitting as as he would. So this is why I say he's a hit and miss. The, like, not downplaying his Adidas collaboration. There's cu- a couple of sneakers that I think are dope that, that introduce new models and or introduce new new kind of aspects to this to the game, like the Oketro or the, su- or the um, Super Tough Jiminy Cricket. But the, problem, but, the, but the problem is that he's working with, he's working with the silhouettes he's working with now. If you translate them back to Nike sneakers, like, like I'm saying, AMX 1s, AMX 90s, um, all of that stuff, it would be a whole different matter. Yeah, more. he would he would have gone on an incredible. I'm sorry. Can you? He would have gone you, on. You did, a, and, you did a New Balance. Yeah, he he would have he would have done a lot better with New Balance, I think, than he would have did with Adidas because of New Balance's relevance versus Adidas' yep. relevance in the space. The, the thing about him, he would have gone on. He could have gone on an epic Air Max run. When you think about think think about the Cortez ninety five, yep. Think about what Skepta has done with Air Max, with with tailwinds, right, and and TNs and all this. Think about Travis, dope Air Max colorway couple. Mm-hmm. Sean Witherspoon's Air Max. 97.1 has done better than arguably any Air Max that we've seen since it released. Am I lying? No, you're not lying there. That is a legendary sneaker. That Air Max 97.1 Sean Weatherspoon will go down as a grail in the sneaker culture. For it really is. It really is, bro. Facts. Really is. Big old facts. It's a shout out just to wear that sneaker. Outside, you know what I'm saying. When I see it, the few times I have seen it, you have a <laughs> you have an undeserved respect that you give to a person just because this could be the trashiest jackass person on the planet, and because they got their sneaker on, you give them a certain level of respect. That's what he did with yeah. Nike before he left, and that's the only thing he did. He could have continued that for at least four or five more silhouettes. Versus say, going over to these other brands and not doing as well. And I I just want to know what happened. Why did he leave? That's all I wanted. Because we're going to keep talking about him and what he has not done since he left. That's yeah, always I'll give, my, I'll give you my answer to that. It's because he wanted to do what he's doing now. He wanted to create his own range. He wanted to make it a vegan base, which is absolutely dope. He was using the materials he wants, the ideas and concepts he wants. He wanted to kind of live his dream in terms of what he wants to do in terms of his range. And I, and I think Adidas are more susceptible to allow him to do that rather than what Nike do is want more overseeing control. So from that aspect, yeah, I, I can see why he left. But uh, I, I can see why you're disgruntled. And when I look at this, I think about how, yeah, it's because it's because um, he left and he's not doing the Air Max One. It's because we were hope we were hoping to see more of what he did with the Air Max One, Air Max Ninety One, uh, One and Ninety Seven. We was hoping to see more of those release. We was hoping to see different variations. We were hoping to see different models. And that that kind of missing that opportunity for not that for not for that not to happen, and him to go to Adidas is the reason why we are the like as sneakers we're disgruntled because we would love to see that happen we'd love to see him given way more air max ones or air max 97s or collaboration maybe take a 98 out so and put it on a different sneaker see what i'm saying or yeah. do do that this is what we wanted to see it unfortunately didn't happen and this is why that fatigue of not having it is why we kind of criticize his Adidas range more because we see the potential that he missed or the potential that could have been there with the night not for the Nike sneakers. And this is why we're disgruntled in, in the way we are. But secondly, also I feel that he's he's an example of of um 
judging from his first collaboration, and that's that's unfortunately what's happened with um, with Sean Weatherspoon. Is everybody looks and when we talk about Sean Weatherspoon, we instantly remember that Grail sneaker, that absolutely magnificent sneaker, and then we like what what happened because look at the sneakers you're producing now, and that that's the, that's what we that's what we're referring to now is is that's what's happening with that whole range. It's like yo, but you did this. Why are you doing this now? This is this see that instant reaction. This is a lot of sneakers, but this is just because of the, of the hope that we had with that Nike collaboration. See what I'm saying? Hope, hopefully he happy with the way he doing at Adidas, man, because for the most part, I don't think uh, the sneaker community is happy with it at all. We wish he was still at Nike. I can only imagine the Air Max 90 upper on with an Air Max 95 bottom, Sean with a spoon, corduroy, <laughs> and, and and this is this is exactly what I just said a minute ago, bro. Because basically, it's us reminiscing of what could have been. Yeah, that's this. Listen, bro. Shout out, shout out to him, man. But I don't understand. I want, I want to hear him talk about why he left. What happened? It would be wanna, interesting. I want to do that. I, I want, I would yeah. like to be able to sit down and listen to his reasoning. And be able to uh, at least understand where he's coming from because it just looked crazy to me. Yo, Sean Webbers, when you listen to this, you're more than welcome to come to the podcast if you want. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Man. All right. Um, so I'm a, I got a main topic. Okay. Actually, two main topics. That could have been quick strikes. But yeah. they would have been your quick strikes. They're gonna be my main topics. Okay. Double down, double down. We talked about <laughs> last week New Balance dropping that six fifty, the white and green with the gum bottom, and comparing it to yeah. the, the SB fours. Right. You can't tell me this New Balance U ninety sixty. White is not a monarch, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, you, you know what? When I saw that, I automatically um, thought about the more uh, a re- very, very retro Nike sneaker. <laughs> or I know any 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 retro sneaker. If I'm honest, white and it's the white and navy blue. <sighs> yeah, yeah. But the the then the black bottom. Um, and I'm looking at as soon as I saw it, bro. And you know how we feel about 1960s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We love the silhouette of the 1960s. A lot of colorways of the 1960s are really, and not that this is a bad colorway, but to me, as soon as I saw this, I'm like, this is a clear Monarch colorway ripoff. Is is this a New Balance thing? <laughs> hey, 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 I'm gonna say one thing, uh, bro. <laughs> the black and red 9060, yeah, is that not a Jordan 1 bread knockoff colorway? Could be, possibly. We saw the white and green 9060 with the gum bottom, and the, you, I mean, the, the comparison to the SB4, you didn't create the comparison. I, I saw it just like you did on IG. Uh, you, mean, you, mean, you mean the New Balance 650, yeah? Yeah, the 650 white and green with the gum okay. bottom compared to the faux. We can, we can keep doing this because we just saw a 9060 multicolor. You can't tell me that wasn't a biohack colorway. Bro, bro. Tell me, tell um, me one. I, I'm I'm I was I was thinking this the no, other day. No, no, tell me it wasn't, bro. It, 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 it was. It was. It was. It was. <laughs> um, I, I'm not gonna tell you it wasn't. It's like it was, bro. Like, like it is. It's uh, it's inspiration. Take low. We we say this all the time. Brands take inspiration from each other. Uh, mm-hmm. Sometimes you take something from another and to make it your own. So it looks it looks like that's what New Balance are doing. But like I had this um I had this uh this thought the other day. Oh shit. Here we go again. New Balance have kind of fallen back a bit this year. Whoa, 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 whoa. I haven't seen the same we haven't seen the same momentum from them. I know uh, Action Bronson got a, a New Balance recently. Um, I, I want to see what the Soleil Bembry, if Soleil Bembry is going to do another variation of sneaker. That's going to that's going to be quite. I just this year 
New Balance in the for, for the first time in a lot a little while, New Balance have gone slightly quiet. They're still number two. Well, so a lot of people saying Salomon's basically taking that number two spot. Uh, here we go. That's the rumor so, on the street. So we don't we don't talk Solomon here because yeah. neither one of us buy Solomon. No. But a lot of people talk of Solomon. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the Solomon talk has caught the New Balance talk. I also think A6 is creeping. Diodora mm-hmm. is creeping. But they... I don't know. It's Right now, it's Solomon New Balance. Yeah, and the, the, the thing is, it was really interesting is when New Balance burst onto the scene, um, they had, you know, with the 990s, 991s and 992s and um, the 550s, all of those silhouettes were like kind of very, very synonymous. And then all of a sudden last year, the Oketro, Adidas Oketro came out. The A6 Gel Light looks like another variation of a similar to the Oketro, Oketro because I can see where the inspiration for the Oketro came from. Wait, and wait, now- wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. The Gel Light 3? Yeah, the gel no, the gel light free. Obviously, A6 have got the gel light free coming out, but then the, the, the Adidas has taken inspiration from the, the A6 range and from other variations to create the Oketro and, and New Balance. So we see we see that we see some of that inspiration on on Oketro. I can see that. I, I, I can see. I see a little more from New Balance than I do from A6 with the Oketro. Yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying though, because of the the crazy patterns. Yeah, but but see what I'm saying is right this moment in time, and so, so, so Salomon sneakers are the epitome of that. Um, let me let me just pull pull this up because I actually have um, a picture of what I'm talking about. But so, so, Salomon uh, basically have that whole distinctive, like almost like um, I'm this, I'm going to pull this picture up. It's almost like a, a, a uniqueness to it that brings this upper with all this craziness on the, on the mid, like lateral mid, medial sides that it actually becomes really intriguing. And all of a sudden you're thinking about that sneaker because let me, let me be honest this year, the, this year and the last couple of years has been sneakers like this are actually have predominantly dominating the scene where you've, you've got a runner, you've got a runner with some crazy, like, paneling on the sides of the uppers with with a thicker back sole which is reminiscent of a a wave runner and kind of that whole unique like a like a balenciaga triple s but a a slim line version of a balenciaga triple s that whole variation you can't tell me the the, the salomon the salomon you're seeing in your screen doesn't reminisce an a6 gelite or a new balance or or a ketro they all of these similar sneakers is in fashion at the moment bro I I hear you and I get it. With the general public, is, by the way. No, 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 no. I'm I'm talking about from um yeah, from the general public, definitely. They they catching on as a brand. Um, just like own, right? I I I, I like to compare Solomon to own because I see as many of each. Well, I'm lying. I see a lot more on from the casual um person. However, this silhouette that you're showing, I think, is um, a lot of these silhouettes. They are they're hiker ish. Yep, a yep. lot of them. So they seem practical, which I think is engaging to the casual audience. But when I look at design aspects of these sneakers, and you can call it buys if you want to, go and look for yourself. This is old school Nike swag. Yeah, yeah. This is 90s Nike ACG uh, trainer swag right here. With the crazy designs on the uppers. Yep. It's different. But I see more inspiration coming from the 90s than I do coming from current um, casual, I guess, walkers or runners. Mm-hmm. It, 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 when I look at these Solomon sneakers, I mean, right. they they. If if you know, if you know '90s trainers, the the comparison is undeniable. 
I agree. I agree with you. And I'm 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 working in the background just just to just to show you example, right, bro. We, right this moment time, he's looking at Sal- we're looking at Salomon's, right? What watch 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 what I'm gonna do. Tell me, tell me the tell me the difference between no, not the difference. Tell me how similar these sneakers are, right? Watch this. You go, you've seen the Salomon, right? Now you're gonna see the gel lights. Look at the gel lights, right? Oh right. yeah, that's, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, you you like, you know, even the outsole on that is is like uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine, nine now, now now look look at look at the Romero Romero, Romero yeah and uh, and then and then now look at now look at the Oketro. You can't tell me there's sim, not similar similarities between all of these sneakers because that's what the casual consumer wants at this moment in time. All of the sneakers that you're just seeing right this moment in time are all designed and dedicated to the normal consumer who looks at those sneakers and says, you know what? I want that. I like the design aspect of that. That looks unique. That looks different. That's going to make me stand out. The colorways will make me stand out. That sneaker is highly in fashion with a normal consumer. Facts. Now look at this. 1998. You look at these sneakers, bro. (laughs) These trainers, these Nikes and these Reebok trainers. And you can see a lot of inspiration. Some of my my favorite trainers on here too, Griffey's. Like East East Bay Archive is what I'm looking. Look at this, bro. Sockanese. Look at the Sockanese. Yeah. Yeah. Look, 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 look at this fila down here at the bottom right. You can't tell me that don't look like a Solomon. Yo, ex- exactly that. And that that whole fashion trend is coming about the Sockanese, the Solomons, uh, all of that. All of those sneakers that I've just showed, and I, I showed it to prove a point, because all of those sneakers, if you took away the branding, they were exactly the same. Uh, you could call one variation, one V2, V3, V4, V5, because they're all similar in the design aspect. The runners, hikers, for the casual consumer, with it's got it's got a big outsole, it's got it's got that design on the medial lateral side, it's got the craziness and colorways. It just brings something unique to the markets. You remember we had a Vapor Max run and that two seventy run. This is the this might run or hiker run basically for 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 the last couple of years. That's what's been that's what's been happening. Especially when New Balance came on board. Especially when New Balance got popular. That's what happened, bro. Yeah. And then people look at New Balance and they said, you know what? I like this architecture of this sneaker. Now where else can I find this in different brands? And people start looking at Solomon's. People start looking at Sakon. Some people start looking at A6 gel lights, A6 and all of that stuff. People start still looking at uh, and that. Oh, this is why that's a Ketra and the Vomero came out. This is why it's designed for that. Yo, the Vomero has quietly been one of the biggest sneakers of the year. It's doing numbers, the Nike, bro. The Nike Vomero 5 is killing the 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 anti-market. Is the, the Vomero is an anti-hype killer yep. right now. And yep. I've been looking at, I've been, <sighs> you, you I, had, I had to fight off, I had to fight off a couple of Romero's this year. Hang on a lot. Um, you know what the beautiful thing is? Like, you, and the, the beautiful thing with that is, and I was about to say, um, bro, you are a Nike guy. I'm surprised you haven't got a Romero in your, in your rotation at the moment. But, the one thing I'm definitely saying with the whole range is when you when people are looking at New Balance like they are, this is why I, this is why I said what I said at the start is the New Balance hype is is kind of like fading to not hype. They, they've been really quiet recently because I think a lot of people got other options as well now. Because basically, when New Balance was when New Balance was becoming a big thing in the UK and everything like that, they people were looking at New Balance to set the silhouettes that they wanted. Now it's like. Oh, we got the silhouettes we wanted with New Balance, but the, you know, look at what Solomon Solomon's doing. Look what A6 are doing. Look what this and that. See what I'm saying? So this is what's happening. Yeah. And and also brands eat eat off themselves because we talked about Kobe's, and I told you we was gonna come back to it. I want to start playing tennis now, bro. <laughs> because tell me this ain't a tennis Kobe. Yeah, Nike it could court be. air zoom light three. It could be, bro. It does. It is very reminiscent of a pro, Kobe Pro Pro. Bro, I want this sneaker. 
Well, you well, take up start start playing tennis, bro. Start start um serving some aces down the line. Yo, I want and that's I don't want it. I don't want it casually. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to. I don't want to deserve this, bro. This this colorway white, this white navy gum colorway. Look at it, bro. It was out of here. I saw it. I got the notification for it when it dropped, right? And I'm like, wait a minute. And I, I get all type of notifications. Yeah. For all from all the brands, from all different hype stuff to GRs, right? So I'm I didn't pay no attention to it. I saw the notification. I didn't click on it. It stayed active on my phone for like a day and a half, two days before I actually went through the notifications and I clicked on this sneaker. And I'm like, damn, they're like a Kobe. But it's a <laughs> tennis shoe. And I went to it and this is what I saw. Only small sizes and nine, nine and a half, you know, average sizes. Sizes that's going to be abundant. If me and you wanted this sneaker, we couldn't get it. No, no. And it's a tennis sneaker. Like, it's made to play tennis. It's a court sneaker. It looked like a Kobe, bro. Yeah. But it made me realize what I always say about the casual audience. Now, I believe this because I said it on the podcast multiple times and I say it in, in conversation in real life. The casual audience really provides for the company what they need for them to be able to give us what we want, right? Yeah, 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 100%. 100%. That's the best thing you, uh, ever. Because if they wasn't doing as well in the casual spaces, it they would, would... Experiment. Yeah, they, they wouldn't, it wouldn't be collabs. And all this great stuff that we getting, you know, so that they spend the extra money on and still give it to us for a, a fairly decent price most of the time. I, I, see, I, see, I see what you did there, Doctor Doctor Q. Um, I'm just waiting for Mister 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 Hype to come out. But you know, Professor Hype to go, bro. Um, you can't I, hype this though. I, no, I want to hype it, but it's it's unhypeable. But it's still it's fire, bro. I mean, the average. If I showed this to a sneakerhead, a quick glance of this, and be like, "Which Kobe is this?" They'll start trying to figure out which Kobe it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. it's not a Kobe. I'm, I'm gonna say one thing for sure, but like this is this you're you're right with that whole analysis because what what happens is the casual casual consumer allows allows um Nike to be uh, experimental with with their um, ranges in terms of giving us sneakerheads what we what they think they should we should give us like UNC toes and all of that stuff, uh, UNC colorways, pine green colorways, pine green this. Oh. Uh, Look at so, it. A, a Nike yeah. Zoom Court Light Three Premium. It's so it's almost six 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 and a half. This is a women's sneaker, bro. Yeah, it's it's gone. Look look at that, bro. Look at that toe. You you know what the best time is that they released it around Wimbledon, Wimbledon as well. And look, it it went on sale thirty seven. It's a seventy dollar sneaker they were selling for forty three dollars. Dog. That's better than some of the stuff that we get that costs us two hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it went on sale for forty three dollars. Come on, man! <laughs> like I'm not listen. Man. We think as sneakerheads because I don't I don't know. And this 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 the point I want to make by showing all these tennis sneakers because when I got that notification for that one sneaker. I went in because Nike, it was Nike uh, member exclusive, blah, 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 something, tennis, blah, blah, blah. So I just, I'm like, all right, whatever. And I do this to myself. I did it with the cleats, right? The Jordan yeah. cleats. I want, I wish I played baseball so I would have a reason to buy a pair of Jordan 1 cleats. Now I'm wishing I played tennis so I would have a read. Bro, they got some dope stuff. And it's all Kobe-esque. Like, bro, we was talking about Eclipse plate. Look. Look, this is a Kobe right here, bro. Nike, <laughs> yeah. Nike Court Air Zoom Vapor Pro. This is a Kobe sneaker, bro. You can't sell you. Come on, I can't remember what was the Kobe uh, Kobe Ten NXT Maybe. or something like that. That it's the same shoe, and it's a hundred and two dollars, and it's sold. 
It's so crazy. It's only three sizes, six and a half, seven and a half, and ten. But the only size you would think that you could go to Nike.com and buy this shoe in your size whenever you feel like it. Nope. Nope, you can't. Cause it's five. And it, here's only, another tennis sneaker, bro. Here's another go. tennis sneaker, bro. There you go. That's the same <laughs> shoe, bro. The Nike Kobe yeah, NHT 360. Yep, I, 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 I see, I see what you mean now. I definitely see what you mean. But um, um, I've, I kind of, you um, have come to the conclusion that I'm well. You, you should know this by now. Is the fact that Nike's big move and incentive at this moment in time is sports, sports, mm-hmm. sports. Always. What, what have we seen recently? Cleats, golf sneakers, tennis sneakers, um, Mac attacks. You see, just we see just seen a whole lot of tennis sneakers there. We've seen uh, NFL cleats. We've seen uh, golfing cleats. We've seen, uh, yeah, uh, and 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 obviously they they doubling down with the NBA because obviously they got more of a domination than the NBA. I I feel like this there's an incentive and a strategy at this moment in time to get that same dominance in all the other kind of um, arenas of sport at this moment in time. Bro, Nike is the biggest sportswear brand yeah. in the world. And and I think I think this is why we're seeing more movement in other sports as well because obviously they dominate the NBA and now it's they're, they're turning their heads on other different areas like tennis, uh, NFL, but um, baseball. Um, I think it's been I think it's been like that. We just don't pay attention. I go down these rabbit holes, bro, off of these notifications because yeah. Nike sends you everything. They don't care what you. <laughs> what you into they're gonna send you everything regardless so when i click on this stuff and i go down these rabbit holes i go down the basketball hole i just went down the tennis hole i've been down the golf hole the soccer hole and they killing in all these areas but you but you just you just basically um reinforce what i just said you mm-hmm. literally reinforce what i just said because they've been doing this right but we've yeah. not been noticing but now we're noticing why are we noticing bro why why at this particular time have we all of a sudden started talking about cleats and we start talking about golf shoes we start talking about um we we just we just you had a quick strike with uh with some golf sneakers or jordan ones and we now we're talking about tennis sneakers why bro t- 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 tell me why to me is is i'm i'm just going down the the line to be honest with you, with, with me as a as a sneaker, as a footwear enthusiast, all these things are interesting to me. But yep. from 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 a casual perspective, the the sneaker hit the sneaker game has died a little bit. Not died, but you know we don't we don't like to use it. It's, it's going quiet. It's going quiet. Exactly. Yep. So all this, I think all this other stuff is is getting this chance to shine through. The, the fog of the sneaker game. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm 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 going to agree with you and disagree with you at the same time. I think the, the, the quietness of what we're seeing release wise is actually dominating the the what allowing us to see other silhouettes and other sporting kind of cleats, which is fine. I agree with you on that. But also um um, we're going to see more, more different. We are the atmosphere in the next six months is going to be totally different because I think the sneaker the sneaker uh, for what we pick up is going to pick up anyway because we're going to see a lot more Jordan Fives and Manier's collaborations, the unions, all of that stuff is coming, which which we know is going to come anyway. Um, that that I think our attention is going to shift there. But you're right, the last six months has been kind of relatively quiet in terms of the sneaker world. Um, but from what I'm going to disagree with you on is, I think it would have still been quiet. Because it's we were it was quiet, and I think even just before after COVID happened, the sneaker game did go a bit quiet. But we didn't see the same momentum in the other sporting ranges. But we're seeing that now because we're seeing a lot more athletes wear sneakers come wear sneakers and showcase sneakers, especially Nikes. We're seeing we're seeing um J no, J Balvin visit DJ Khaled on a golf course, giving them J, some J Balvin fees, but DJ Khaled's wearing. Golf, golf fours, golf ones. He's wearing. Travis Scott is getting a Jordan one low golf. He uh, he's done a Mac attack campaign. So all of that 
if it wasn't for the for the brand Nike pushing the other sporting arenas to dominate that, they're using what they know best, which is collaborations, athletes, and music artists to promote, promote the other sporting ranges. So now DJ Khaled's got a golf course exhibition in Miami, right? Just to, just, just to kind of showcase, yeah, well, this is a golfing sneaker. We're going to do a golfing event. That wasn't happening. Two years ago, bro. No, no, and they we know they lean they leaning super hard on golf. I mean, we just talked yeah, about Michelle Wee, so the same thing. We're gonna say we're gonna say this, you see the self same, same thing in in an NFL in the tennis world. Joe jo Macro, no, bro, Joe Macro didn't need to do a, a collaborate like a Travis Scott photo shoot, bro. It, it would have come out two five years ago. It would just would have come out. See what I'm saying? Well, and and with with the Williams being retired, they gotta they got. I mean, Naomi Osaka got her stuff going on, and her her stuff is dope too. But if you don't play yep. tennis, you ain't gonna pay that much attention to it. Guess what? If I play tennis, I need either one, if not both, of them sneakers that I highlighted from the Nike yeah. tennis sneakers. And and I had the same conversation with Scott the other day. Scott was like, "Why are they doing golf sneakers? Why are they doing like?" And I said to him, "Bro." It's because Nike have got Travis Scott with a spotlight or DJ Khaled with a spotlight or one of their athletes with a spotlight shining a light on their range and saying, yo, we're here. Look at this. Would you like these guys? Why not? Why not? Yeah, why not? Exactly. Um, but th- th- this is why and this is why I'm glad you said what you said, because it reinforced what I was trying to get at was you said it's always been there. I know it's always yeah. been there. Look, they got a gym, they got a gym range right check out because I I want a a, a gym sneaker to rock while I'm Metcon. moving training. Yeah, the Metcon, Metcon exactly. is a weight is weightlifting shoes. Exactly. It's flat flat base sneaker, flat base. And this is why I wear, wear trainers or Jordan ones or I wear a, a, a flat sneaker or a van because they're good for lifting, especially deadlifts and squats and stuff like that. But we don't if you didn't look for them, you didn't know. But now we're not looking for them, but we've been told about them. And this is that's the big push which I was trying to get at was every single sector Nike is trying to dominate. Like like they did to the NBA, they're trying to dominate the golfing range, they're trying to dominate the tennis courts, they're trying to dominate the NFL pitches, bro. That's what it's all about. And baseball yeah. as well now. We've seen we've seen that already. Baseball now, we're being told. It's not it's not Nike's like right this moment time saying if you're not looking, we're gonna tell you. Guess what? And we're gonna tell you with an artist, bro. Guess what? <laughs> What's that? Tennis, Serena, greatest tennis player ever. Also, Naomi Osaka. Also, yep. John McEnroe. You know what I'm saying? Also, Andre Agassi. Andre Agassi. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The I'm greats. Only, only the greats. Basketball. George. LeBron. Durant. Only the greats. Right? Only the greats. Yep. Baseball. Ken Griffey Jr. Only the greats. <laughs> Tiger Woods. Football. Golf, Tiger Woods, Tiger Michelle Wood. Wee, only the greats. But Bo but, Jackson, Barry Sanders, Deion Sanders, Bruce Smith, Junior Seau, only the greats in football. We do greats. I, I, and I know do. the fingers. And the we fingers. Sell every Neymar, Jordan, only the greats. <laughs> but you think, well, you got you got to remember one thing though is um with with the NBA it's it's a bit different because what happened with the NBA was even though you had the greats they've monopolized on the NBA quite heavily with with like Kobe's with like uh, Kyrie's with like well, old Kyrie range with LeBron with uh, Jordans all of that stuff even with the Jordan retros becoming one of the biggest sneakers that NBA players wear start start starting to wear now um, but the, the thing is the domination I think I there was a st- wasn't it a stat or fact that ninety percent ninety percent of the sneakers worn are Nike or Jordans in the NBA or some 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 something, something ridiculous like that or ninety seven so- the athletes, or well, some, it was something ridiculous, was something, like something crazy. I don't think it was that high, but it's a, yeah. it's a lot, bro. It's a lot. Yeah. And, and so, so, so that domination came from the fact that they've got a, a plethora of sneakers uh, uh, collaborators and sneaker artists and sneaker athletes um, within that 
range. So now the dot like when, when, when the names you just said, you're cherry we're cherry picking the names from like golf and from stuff like that. But that's the domination they want to see in other arenas to actually replicate what the NBA model is. In every arena, that's the goal. And that's what Nike's been doing. Like that's this is why we've been seeing what we've been seeing, bro. Listen, uh, there there are other other products out there and other brands, of course, that um that specialize. But Nike is just across the board on everything, and they're gonna make great products in every category. So yeah, it, and because it's designed for the athletes in mind, that this is why they're so great because they, the, the whole motto for Nike was always designing the sneak for the athletes in mind. And this is why um, it's going to be hard. And this is why Nike are doubling down on every sport because basically it's like we've got all this momentum in but in basketball and in the NBA. And look at what it's created us. Look at how look it created Jordan Brand. It created Jordan Brand right um, from that whole ep- whole era of awesomeness. So why are we sitting here not doing everything everywhere else? Because what if we have a chance to do something what we did we did with the NBA and Jordan brand within golf, within NFL, within that's the reason why they're doing what they're doing. Yeah. Welcome back to the We Love Nike podcast. <laughs> 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 we shoot bail for Nike every week is what we do we buy <laughs> Nike we love Nike we hate every other brand y'all trash we win <laughs> is it y'all your bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's you bro uh, but the thing, the thing is the thing is it's easy to see like you you told you, you told me one thing the other day right well I always go in deep and I always kind of try and logically work out why certain things happen and everything happens for everything is coincidental and it's not everything's not coincidental it happens for a reason it happens mm-hmm. because it happens because somebody's done something so i'm saying and this is how we work the situations out this is why I sometimes go in that deep because for me it's quite easy to spot strategies and when I sit here and I'm like, okay, I know why they did that or okay why are they doing that bam 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 it kind of comes this might be the reason why. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I just, I just be wanting to laugh at everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Doctor Q. <laughs> Today you name me Doctor Q, bro. <laughs> anyway, man, I got. You put hold, on. Hype. hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you ain't got. I got some. You ain't got none. You got some. But for sneaker court, I got some. If you don't. Okay, let's go. Let's go do this, bro. <laughs> let's do it. When resale is too high. Damn, resale is too high. Hold on, When hype beats go too far. These damn hype beats. Hold on, hold on in the court, hold on. The back door opens. Guilty. It's time for. Order in the court. The sneaker court of public Guilty. opinion. Welcome to Sneaker Court Public Opinion with me, Judge Public Opinion and Executioner. What's up, bro? Hey, man. This is the part of the game we hate. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, I don't, no. I don't think uh, this story that we about to hash out is sneaker related at all, but. A grown ass man robs teenage girl for shoes. This is this is the part of the we don't want to talk about this part of the sneaker experience. Cause we don't we don't know, and I'm not I'm not shooting this dude no bail. I'm not saying all of this. We don't know if this was a homeless person, a drug addict, an alcoholic, somebody that's just out on the streets doing whatever. There is no excuse, no excuse for for robbing, assaulting, or harassing young people, let alone a young women out out here in this world. When you're a grown ass, she was fourteen years old, bro. 
and he was and, like 25. Yeah, I, th- I think the story goes that he wanted to talk to her. She said no, and then he robbed her for her sneakers. Bro, like, I mean, how big is your ego? How low is your self-esteem? To do that. You're a 25-year-old man, first of all. And I'm going to say this. At 25, you should be able to tell the difference between somebody that's in your range and a teenager. If you can't, yep. something wrong with your, your 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 peepers, bro. Like, this was just a little girl you're trying to talk to. Why? Yep. Why? So yep. now, now you're a tester. Okay? These charges that need to be added on to. Because you 25, you trying to holler at a 14 year old. What you doing? Um, I'm I'm not gonna cut any any jip to this guy. Um, in terms of I'm not gonna hold my tongue. Uh, if 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 what I think is happening, then he needs to get the full sentences for what he's doing. Um, even if it's grooming, whatever you want to call it, I I just bro, if he's guilty, he's guilty, and um, you should cut no, him off. Like, no, it's all we, that, bro. It's all that. Grooming. Uh, 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 we uh, need we need to kind of work out what the situation is. It could be we don't know the whole story, and I and uh, like we do on here anyway. We need to know the whole story for what what the events were. If she's a stranger, if she's a family friend, if she's whatever she is to him, like let's let's be honest. We don't know. Uh, so for, from that aspect, we hold we can't on. like hold come. On. Let's listen to this. No, vo- no volume to this, but um, basically, do you want to reshare and uh, actually try and get the volume back? But yeah, we we don't we don't really know what her what his and hers relationship is or relation is. They might be uh, I don't know, bro. But it doesn't look good for him at all. Uh, and from from that perspective alone, um, bro, <sighs> yo, go on, bro, play it. Let me reload it right quick. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's not looking. It's not looking good. At all. Oh my god! Hasn't got, hasn't got any sound. Hasn't got any sound, bro. I don't think he's got any sound. Uh, um, but basic. But basically, it doesn't. It doesn't look great on him. It doesn't look great on uh, to to anybody at this moment in time in terms of what people think about him. Uh, yeah, I was. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't want to raise it my sneaker news either because that 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 needs to whatever that is needs needs full doubling down on that guy bro let's see if I can get it to play now right but um whatever man yeah this is this is nasty um this this guy deserves everything that's coming to him I think he needs more charges because his intentions were not good um I know the law doesn't necessarily allow for for that to happen you can't charge somebody based on what they may have done in the future. But to me, coming from where I come from, a 25-year-old man trying to talk to a 14-year-old girl, nope, that's nasty. You, you, you nope. need charges for that. Uh, you, need, you need hood justice for that right there alone. Mm-hmm. And based on the fact that you feel like you got to take something from this little girl, this 14-year-old girl, that did not maybe maybe if she was 25 she would have talked to you but she ain't she 14 and she knew better than to associate with a grown man that she don't know for no apparent reason it's on you partner at that point control your emotions and do the right thing and let it go this story isn't even sneaker related, bro. It's not. It is not sneaker related. He could have stolen anything from her, and you ironically stole her sneakers for some reason. But, um, yo, bro, let's not talk about this any further because there's only one thing we can say about this, bro. <laughs> Guilty, gone, bro. What you want to give that sentence to that guy? Put him under the jail, bro. He 25. Let's see. Give him five. Give him five. Um, most men start to really come around in their thirties. Give him five, bro. Let him sit down until he's thirty, and hopefully, by the time he get out, he'll have his uh, emotions together. That's yeah, that's not needed, bro, at all. 
Uh, yeah, it's, um, I've, I've, I'm just going to say, you grown-ass guys need to leave these little girls alone, bro. That's all I'm saying. Nasty. When resale is too high. Damn, resale is too high. Hold on, hold on. When hype beats go too far. These damn hype beats. Order, order in the court, order. When the back door opens. Guilty. It's time for... Order in the court. The sneaker court of public Guilty. opinion. <sighs> Episode 74 of the Shudo Podcast. Um... Interesting week, interesting week of, of, of revelations this week. Um, we had we had yeah we had the NBA young boy yeeting all the designs and aspects and <laughs> information. We had a lot more a lot more cleats and a lot more um, sporting sneakers, which was awesome to see. Um, we've got New Balance. Hopefully, we see a return from New Balance in the next six months. Um, let's just see what happens with that. Um, obviously, there's a lot. Oh, bro. This week was all about the billions, though, bro. All about the billions, and maybe the future trillions. We're, in about twenty years' time, we'll be talking about trillions, bro. Imagine. <laughs> some of them, some of them are already having that conversation, man. They yeah. just ain't hit it yet. The conversation will be had, though. <laughs> yep, strut the bro. Every every single every single time we we sit down and and look at stuff like that, we. We always come with like we always there's always inspirations, there's always ideas, like and, and you know what one one famous quote it's not I don't know if it's famous, but one quote I always remember is nothing's new, everything's co- everything is copied somehow some way. Yeah, ain't nothing new under the sun. Right before we close it though, bro. <laughs> let me give you this loose choose or dump. I'm going to do S A six gel light. Salomons or Sacconi? Or Sacconi? That's too easy. Um, John. I'm going to dump. Ooh. It's not as easy as I thought. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Look at you tripping, bro. You were like, yo, this is easy. And then two seconds later, okay, now I have to make a choice. It's not easy enough anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, the choice is easy. I'm choosing A6. Okay. Um, I am you- going to have to dump. I'm gonna dump Solomon. Ooh, because they the, they the most recent to my knowledge. So I've been yeah. seeing I've been seeing uh, Sacconi since the '90s, bro. Since the early '90s. We wore we wore a lot of Sacconis in Atlanta. I had a pair. Um, did I have a black pair? No, I want to say I had an all white pair. Sacconi, Sacconi. Uh, I think those those are the two ways we always pronounce it: either Sacconi or Sacconi. I think the correct correct pronunciation is Sacconi. Sacconi, yeah, yeah. We used to say Sacconi back in the day. So yeah, it was a, all different colors, bro. Green, red, yellow, orange, black, white, blue, whatever color they dropped, we was on them. They was cheap, they was clean, and we was on them hard in Atlanta, bro, for a good three, four years. Ooh, all right, cool. I got, I got another one for you now. This is gonna, this is, this is gonna show your, this is gonna show your biasness. New Balance, Adidas. Or kangaroos. <laughs> um, are you gonna go the way I think you're gonna go? New balance of these kangaroos. Lose, choose, or dump. Damn. That's tough. New I balance of Adidas or kangaroos. I can't. Oh my god. I gotta lose kangaroos. Oh, so you uh, dumping? I gotta lose kangaroos. I'm gonna have to dump Adidas, bro. <laughs> you do that. I knew you were gonna do that, bro. Your bias came out right there, bro. <laughs> I got to. 
<laughs> I got to, man. However, I knew you was gonna do that. I knew. However, gonna... I I don't want to I don't want to dump the Drake disses, but Adidas people that like to argue about the Adidas versus Nike, I'd rather not hear, hear them conversations ever again, bro. That way, that way we would have kept Yeezy too at Nike, or he just would have went to New Balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? You know what? There's a lot of what ifs, right? There's a lot of what ifs. Like, what if New Balance had Kanye? What if um, J well, J Balvin did something with Adidas? What if um, Bad Bunny did something with uh, Nike? What if there's a lot of what ifs, bro? What if John Weatherspoon stayed? What if um, what you call it? Uh, Travis Scott had a had a um, any other collaboration except for Nike, bro. Imagine, like, bro, there's a lot of what ifs, bro. A lot of what ifs uh, coming to a different dimension near you. The what if solution. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a lot of, that's a lot of mocking up. So I mean, don't, don't you believe? Don't you wish? Right, you had you had a dashboard, right? A dashboard where you can press back and forth button, right? Like left or right. And then there was a screen and it showed you a different scenario of a different dimension. And all of a sudden you can say, what if Nike didn't get Jordan in 1985? And what if Adidas did? Let's press that button and have a look. You the engineer. I'm waiting on you to put the plan in there. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> don't, ask me no, don't ask me no questions that you might have a potential solution to <laughs> that's what we're not going to do here you know what? We, 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 could, we could potentially map that one day properly and actually think about it and work out strategically for the current how currently the Adidas operate what Jordan would have had what Jordan would have rocked. What what if what if Reebok didn't leave Adidas and became formal? No, 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 no. You can do all that. I'm not doing nothing. <laughs> <that for you. laughs> I'm gonna just go with my imagination. No, I ain't bro, doing I'll, no math. I ain't doing no I'm, math I'm, behind I'm numbers. I'll be lost down that rabbit hole for years. You won't see me pop my head out. <laughs> Go ahead, as long as you as long as you show up every Sunday. <laughs> because the conclusion, the conclusion would have been Jordan would have won the, the quadruplet. Uh, as long as you show up every Sunday, you can do everything you want to do in the background. As long as you show up for the podcast. All right. This has been episode 75. <laughs> we still crazy and we still hitting that record button every week, man. And as you as you can see. Yeah, and we 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 gonna be here. We still pre we appreciate everything, bro. Y'all bring them, bring them. Huh? God, and by the way, we've got two new mascots. We've got uh, Mr. Catman <laughs> and Dr. Q and Professor Hype. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'm finna I'm finna go, man. I ain't coming here for this. <laughs> <laughs> episode 74 man y'all hit all them buttons and make sure y'all hitting all, all the pages and hitting yo, the, yo. the sub and all that you gonna stop you gonna stop what 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 you got now what you got now what you got now you, you, you know Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde right and um, mm-hmm. the problem is what, what, how you contain your, your professor hype is by getting a, a sneaker and every month to actually retain that medicine for that actual hype beast to come out. So if you don't if you don't cop a sneaker per month, the hype beast is coming up, bro. <laughs> Watch out for <laughs> Professor Hype Beast. <laughs> you need that sneaker per month, bro. My man. My man. This man, this man. <laughs> hey man. We'll see y'all next week, bro. What you think now? <laughs> Throw up the piece, bro. Throw up the piece, okay? Throw up the piece. <laughs>